why men don't approach women anymore. So historically, women have always waited for men to make the first move. Is he going to go in for the kiss? Is he going to hold my hand? But now, whenever I talk to my friends about their dating history, all I hear them talking about is, oh, he hasn't made a move. He's not doing anything. We're not moving forward. So on the flip side of this, this normally ends up in men feeling like they're getting ghosted or that there's just being told there's no spark. And from what I'm hearing from a lot of my clients, it's not because that you're not attracted to her. It's more about fearing that you're either gonna get rejected, maybe you're gonna get turned down, you know, slapped in the face when you go for that first move, or even worse, like getting in trouble with the law. So you need to ask yourself, does this sound like you? The truth is you probably missed that golden opportunity to create that spark. And she likely was giving you signals that you just didn't quite catch. Wow, not just did she uh, mention very clear and valid reasons why men don't approach. She did the usual female tactic of blaming men for not taking the risk. Let me be clear here. Even men who are experienced at catching the signals, as this coach puts it, run the risk of reading everything wrong. Women always use the double standard of blaming any inconvenience on society or men. Did any of you ladies watching stop for a moment and realize the issue here is mostly caused by women? And that wasn't a jab either. I'm not saying you should jump his bones every time he approaches. I am saying with the amount of uh, shaming videos, cancel culture, false accusations, and loss of employment slash freedom in today's dating, can you really blame men for uh, being extra cautious? For those ladies who say it's a man's lack of confidence, well, when Average Joe sees you popping out puppies for Chad slash Tyrone by the half dozen, while he gets rejected and ridiculed for being the uh, type of man you refuse to settle for, you think he is willing to run the risk of getting fired or getting uh, some shiny new bracelets for saying hi to you the wrong way? Oh, hell no. But as you say, ladies, confidence beats out everything. Yeah, just look at Johnny Depp. Moving on. I think I now know the problem with marriages, relationships, or whatever you're doing with whoever. Um, men are no longer looking at their women, their wife, their girlfriend, their whoever you're talking to, like they're looking at other women on social media in bikinis and crop tops and showing off their cute little 12 year old boy bodies with mosquito bites and no ass. Like, I carried a baby for nine months. Sorry I don't look like Kim K after having children. Like, hype your woman up. Ladies, men are very clear that after popping out a puppy, your bod isn't the same. I don't think the norm is that men expect a supermodel figure from you, although I can't help but notice the double standard women throw around with that. What? What are you talking about? Okay, let me explain that in womanese. In order for a man to be attractive, he must show confidence, be in shape, have good income, be knowledgeable, have ambition, have assets, be a certain height, etc., etc., etc. Notice how all of these requirements are not a one-time thing. They must be constant for his attraction levels to remain high. Now, why is it required of him for the long term, but the moment you have a rug rat, he is not supposed to require you to work on yourself to get back in shape? How dare you? Listen, men completely understand that you are not going to be the way you were. But that doesn't give you a free pass to lay on the couch all day eating pretzels, working on the, the extension of your uh, second chin, and claim it comes with the uh, motherhood preset package. Ladies, men are simple creatures. They don't expect to walk around with Kim K hanging on their arms, but they want someone they can go out with that puts as much effort into self-improvement as they themselves do. Moving on. I appreciate everyone's feedback on why guys don't approach girls anymore. I have multiple points to bring up. So for the people who use the excuse of like, guys won't go up to girls anymore because they're afraid of coming off as like, you're weird. Like, that's not a thing. If you're not and you're not weird and you go up to a girl, like, it's just not a thing. But I understand where you guys are coming from, from other girls saying that they don't feel comfortable when guys do that. But I think that girls are just saying that when a guy genuinely is creepy. And I hope all of you guys are not generally creepy. There are some creepy people out there. <sighs> Whatever. Also, some people are like, well, I'm not going to like find my wife like at a bar or whatever. But then like, what does that say about like you? Like, you know? If you're the type of person who would be at a bar, then why would another type of person who would be at a bar not be, you know, possible love interest? 
Okay. Coming off as cran grapey or weird is not a thing. Wow, the saying, privilege is invisible to those who have it, rings true. Maybe this queen doesn't understand that for women, the category of creep is greatly tied in with how attractive the man is. If he approaches and says hi but is not attractive, he is a creeper. Also, men go to a bar to have a drink and not take anything there too serious, i.e. the women at the bar fall into the uh, not serious category. Ladies, for as much as some of you may try to make a direct comparison with men on activities alone, we are not the same. We don't go to a bar looking for wife material, just like you women don't go to Skid Row looking for husband material. I mean, what does it say about a man being at a bar? Um, he is a man at a bar. There aren't any real negative stereotypes about men hanging out at a bar every now and then. Unless, of course, they have a drinking problem. Whoa, whoa. Anyways, after gathering all of my data, here is what I've come to. Unfortunately, we are all alone. I'm sorry, and I don't make the rules. But both genders don't want to talk to each other. We don't want to use dating apps anymore. We all want to stay in our comfort zone with the people that we know when we're out. We don't really feel like making an effort to meet new people. And then for the people who say, well, the right person is just going to come at the right time, blah, blah, blah. That is, that was a thing our parents, our grandparents, yes, that was a real thing. But now in the world of dating apps, texting, technology, and apparently people who don't like talking to one another. The chances of that happening, unfortunately, are slim to none now. Back then, people actually made an effort because there wasn't the technology to just find the person online. If you missed your opportunity with a person you saw in person, then that opportunity is gone. I don't know, it's definitely a real shame that this is where we're all at. But at this rate, I can, I can confidently say that do not be surprised when all of us are middle-aged, going to be really old, and we're all still alone. <laughs> Back then, people made effort. When she said people, what she really meant was men made an effort. Never at any point in the history of dating in the US have the bulk of women taken the initiative. It has always been the men who take the risk of rejection. She's referring to the old style of cold approach before the social media female-led norm of video recording and putting a guy on blast was a thing. Yes, you women did everything in your power to make it clear to men they would be canceled or put online for the world to see if they committed the sin of being interpreted as creepy by your own personal standards. And now that you ladies are seeing the uh, fruits of your labor, you are complaining about it? Ladies, do you want to know something interesting about this whole thing? You don't see a bunch of videos made by men complaining they can't approach women in public anymore to get rejected. It is overwhelmingly women making videos of either getting approached by the creep or not getting approached at all. And for the most part, men fall into two categories. Either they're hitting it or they're not. Being rejected is like page one in the male dating rule book. Oof, it must really hurt the female ego of getting hit with something harder than that. As in not even being approached to get rejected in the first place. <laughs> Moving on. Here's why I'm not sure if I want to date men who have kids anymore. This is more so for my women in their 30s or 40s who know they don't want to have children, which is totally fine, by the way, and are open to dating men who already have kids. Hear me out. I'm 37 years old and I made the personal decision that I do not want to get pregnant. Um, it's not something that feels natural for me personally or something that I want to experience. It honestly scares the shit out of me and I'm sure there's a lot of women out there who um, agree with me. Um, might sound crazy to other women, but it's just not for me. So being that I'm 37, um, if I meet a man, I always tell them that, you know, I'm not looking to have children. I always tend to date men who already have kids so that I don't feel pressure to have to give them a child later. I tend to date older men in their 40s or early 50s, uh, like I said, who already have children or are okay with living the rest of their life without kids and just living their life out with their partner. The last few times I dated men with kids, I was always all for it because I actually love kids. I love family um, and I embrace that, you know?
Okay, she did a soft preface of her video as to some of her experiences in dating men with children. Not surprising to my male viewers that she is in her mid to late 30s and dates men in their 40s and 50s. This is sounding like par for the course so far. I do want to bring attention to how women are hesitant to date men with children even when that takes the pressure off them. Ladies, let's not sugarcoat this at all. Men dating single moms is far different than women dating single dads. It is highly doubtful a single dad is looking for a mommy to his children. But single moms openly admit they are looking for a man to provide for her and her offspring. Also, the pressure of having another child is much less with a single dad than a single mom who would consider popping out another puppy for the uh, child support check insurance. Let's face it, the game is rigged. Liar! But the last few times I notice it's like a pattern that keeps happening and I don't know what to do anymore because now I'm again dating another man who has two kids. But between the co-parenting and wanting to be there for their kids, I feel like I keep running into the problem where, you know, they're getting overwhelmed and they don't have enough time to date. Um, which I could understand. I've never been a parent, but if I was, I would want to be very involved in my kids' lives. And especially as a dad, I respect that dads want to be good dads now. Love that. Don't mean to sound selfish in any way when I say this, but it's also like a little frustrating because we can't just get up and go on an adventure together. Or, you know, we can make plans to hang out, but then there's an emergency with the kids and it interferes. And you have to accept these things when you're dating someone with children. And I do. But the problem that I'm really running into is that they start to get really overwhelmed. Um, even if I'm not giving them necessarily a problem with the time constriction, but they're just like, I'm dealing with my ex-wife, I'm dealing with the kids, I'm dealing with work, this, 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 and that. Like, I really, really like you, but I just don't think I'm ready for a relationship. Like, I think I just need to stay focused on my family. Wow, ladies, it's almost like the uh, responsible man that all of you asked for, usually after smashing into the wall, is actually responsible. Imagine a father putting his children first. Oh, and the uh, copious amount of uh, videos trying arbitrarily to shame men into dating single mothers because they deserve better seems to be a direct contradiction here, doesn't it? This may sound shocking, ladies, but I promise you, far more of my male viewers could relate to this woman's list of dating hurdles than any of my female viewers. Just about everything she mentioned to include limited time management, not being able to take off on adventures whenever, kid emergencies, taking priority, and much more comes with the territory of dating a single mom. Hey, what can be said other than what men are told when dealing with these realities? Keep supporting him because in the end, he is worth it and deserves better. Until he decides his responsibilities hinders his relationship too much to continue it. Hmm, does that sound familiar to my male viewers maybe? But wait, there's more. So what's troubling for me is that I keep getting hurt, right? Because I keep giving these fathers with children a chance because in the beginning, they swear they're ready to date. They're like, I am so ready to date. Um, you know, this is this is really, I'm in a time in my life where I really wanna find the love of my life again, and I'm ready to do this. And I'm like, are you sure? And this person becomes, you know, my boyfriend per se. And then it always winds up where they get overwhelmed and they back out and then I wind up getting hurt. Right now I'm dating a guy where I really wanna make it work, um, but I'm, terrified i can see that he gets overwhelmed with the kids sometimes like i'm terrified he's just gonna like back out again so guys i mean women too you're welcome to comment please do but like men especially men who have children single men who have kids like give me some advice here do you think it's worthwhile to continue dating these men when they think they're ready and they're actually not or how do i determine if they are really ready and I'm just trying to find the love of my life right now. And I'm in a really, really vulnerable place right now. My dad just passed away last month and I really like this guy, but I'm scared. So let me know your thoughts. Greatly appreciated. Okay, this girl is going to give the best advice. And ladies watching out there, if you're in a similar situation or if you have a girlfriend in a similar situation, shoot this video her way. I am confident after doing the PC reaction of labeling everything I say as misogyny, the truth of my words will slowly but surely sink in. Now, if you are a childless, attractive woman in your 30s, there are realities you must accept. 
Let's start with your strengths are that you are at the front of the line in your age group. What I mean is your lack of baggage, open schedule and attractiveness has every other single mother in your age range beat. Hands down. Now the negatives you must face. Unable to have children means men looking to start a family are 99.9% .9 off the table. You will be limited to selecting from the single men who are not looking to having children. Usually those men have baggage of their own, even the higher value ones. Your best bet would be to filter those men out by their children before commitment from your part. What that means is don't look at the guy's age, but the age of his kids. Men who have multiple children under the age of 14 are far more likely to be overwhelmed. Think about it. If a man has two kids age 14 and 17, chances are he will be less pressured by emergencies as the 17 year old will age out soon and the 14 year old will not be too far behind. Then a new serious relationship can be more easily accepted. I'm not saying that men with younger children should be discarded. I am saying that a woman who doesn't have any children does have the pick of the litter when it comes to men who do have children up to a certain point. This isn't true for all cases as it's always a gamble but it can definitely be a safer bet. I'm just saying, if you enjoy this audit, click on the video in the end screen for more content. If you would like to support the channel, please follow the link in the description to donate to our beer fund or like, subscribe, and share this video on other social media platforms. If you agree or disagree with anything about this audit, please let us know in the comments. I'm going to leave this audit right here. I'll see all of you in the next episode.